It's Sunday morning on CBS. And here again is Lee Cowan. You know the composer from the very first notes. John Williams has a signature style, and he has no intention of resting on his laurels. Tracy Smith offers us his summer song. In the hills of western Massachusetts, the midsummer breeze carries the scent of honeysuckle and the sound of genius. This is Tanglewood, the summer home of the Boston Symphony Orchestra and of its best known artist in residence, John Williams. The maestro actually lives in Los Angeles, but he says Tanglewood is where he's done some of his best work. Its effect on me is very spiritual and very exciting, and I've written so much music here, so many films, scores in this place. Here? Right here, I come every summer. Can you drop some names, the scores I that you wrote here? Star Wars films, and Indiana Jones, and Schindler's List, Harry Potter, a great percentage of that work done physically here. And what astonishing work it is. John Williams is the most honored movie composer of all time, with five Academy Awards so far. And he has 52 Oscar nominations, more than any other living person. Only Walt Disney has more. I know you're a very modest man, but do you ever allow yourself that moment to step back and say, wow, look what I've done? Tracy, I'll be completely honest with you. It's very hard for me to take complete pleasure in anything that I've made. You can love it, and you can love it all, but you can always see things that could be improved. Uh, I wish I, could have, I had the kind of person I could say, ah, oh, this is fantastic. But I don't think there's that, in the art of music, I don't think there's any place for that kind of vanity. I don't know who else could, who could possibly feel that way, given the, the shoulders we stand on. But your shoulders are pretty broad and strong at this point. You're part of that foundation well, I now. couldn't get into the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, but what John Williams does takes a different kind of muscle. So I've now been coming here for 39 years every summer, happily conducting the orchestra briefly each year. In fact, just a few nights ago, the 89-year-old maestro was back on the podium at Tanglewood. As always, Williams wowed the crowd before passing the baton back to Boston Pops conductor Keith Lockhart. And it's a big part of my life and the perfect antidote to the Hollywood activities that I do the rest of the year. Uh, so it keeps me maybe not young, but hopefully a little fresh. <laughs> Fresh, indeed. In 2019, he reworked some of his movie music for violin, specifically her violin. Anna Sophie Mutter is one of the greatest violinists ever to pick up a bow. Watching you, you seem so... I mean, it's just like this music was made for you, but I'm wondering what's going through your yeah. head and heart as you're It's actually extremely these. emotional for me because uh, as I know John's music since my childhood, then meeting the person behind the music and working together with this genius is, is an incredibly humbling and elevating experience. No, 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 not at all. Of course, if you want an elevating experience, try listening to Hedwig's theme from the Harry Potter films played on a Stradivarius. This is a fabulous instrument. Yeah. Yeah. When you think about Strads, I mean, how, what is it, three, four hundred years old? Yeah, how old is it? No, uh, it's born in 1710. 1710. With all of our technology and fussing around, mm -hmm. this odd-looking little wooden box, you know, it has a shape. You, who would imagine such a thing? Yeah. Uh, it cannot be improved upon. Mm -hmm. 
do you listen to the film scores once they're in the movies, once they're out there? No. No, why no. not? Because I'm writing music all the time, Tracy, and, and therefore it's no comfort to listen to it. I don't listen to music very much. At particularly all. if you go to a dinner party, which I do rarely, and somebody has music on, I'm thinking, well, that's in D major, and oh my God, the F sharp was flat. If I listen to the great classical composers, I would only think that's much better than anything I could write. It, it isn't comforting. It's not inspiring. <laughs> no, it's not comforting. No, no. <laughs> and it, you it don't makes me, it, it does make me think that one can always be better. Welcome to Jurassic Park. It could be argued that film composing doesn't get any better than the work he's done with director Steven Spielberg. To date, Williams has scored all but three of Spielberg's feature films, including 1993's Schindler's List. It's Hebrew from the Talmud that says whoever saves one life saves the world entire. When he first showed you Schindler's, what did you say? And I was like, I don't bawl, but I really, I was choked up. And I said, Stephen, I just have to leave the room. And I went outside and walked around, collect myself and back in to start the meeting. And this is just about verbatim. I said, Stephen, you, this is a great film and you really need a better composer than I am for this film. And he said, I know, but they're all dead. That, that was, so I went on to become the, the live composer. Like the movie, the musical score is itself a classic, telling the story as no words ever could. Writing it, Williams says, took everything he had. How all-consuming is your work when you are composing? It's a great privilege to be able to work the way I work, but it is so intense that you neglect things. You can neglect people, you can neglect family. I have wonderful children. My late wife is gone, but the present wife is very happy. Uh, but. It, it, it does so con consume your life, this work, which it really shouldn't. A lot of the work that I do is certainly not that important. But the process of doing it is, is so all-consuming, just to suggest your word you've used, uh, uh, that that is the truth of it. It's not, it isn't a sometime thing. It's a full-time thing. It really is so cool. Right now, the maestro has a few other projects in the works, and he might not appear on stage as often as he or his fans might want. But somehow, when John Williams is conducting, the music you've heard a thousand times can suddenly give you goosebumps again. Thank you.